Fifty years ago today, Dr. No debuted on movie screens in London. And in three weeks' time, the 23rd official film based on the exploits of James Bond, Agent 007, will open there. It's the longest-running franchise in movie history. It's lasted through six different James Bonds and weathered colossal changes in both movie making and the geopolitical climate that originally spawned Ian Fleming's literary creation. But mainly, it's all been great fun. A British secret agent with a license to kill, a penchant for vodka martinis and beautiful women, not necessarily in that order, <laughs> but always accompanied by great music. Memorable title songs, powerfully effective scores, and one theme in particular that has become truly iconic. Recognize the world over, sometimes just for its opening bass line. The James Bond theme, which we heard at the outset, was written by London songwriter Monty Norman as part of his score for Dr. No. He had been to Jamaica with the crew in January 1962 and recorded a lot of music there. But he was back in London before he came up with a signature tune for his hero. He pulled an old, unused song out of a drawer, dropped the lyrics, sped it up a little, and voila, doom did doom 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 did doom doom but as we will hear shortly and firsthand from our guitarist friend Vic Flick, it took arranger orchestrator John Barry to turn that sketch into the dark and dangerous sound that became the familiar theme for James Bond. John Barry was an up and coming young composer who had already enjoyed several instrumental hits with his group, the John Barry Seven. He had become music director at London's EMI Records and was starting to do movies with titles like Beat Girl or as it was titled here in America, Wild for Kicks. <laughs> Don't you just want to see that movie? <laughs> After Dr. No, and success on the record charts for his arrangement of the Monty Norman theme, Barry was invited to write the music for the second Bond film, From Russia With Love. And it was so effective, so atmospheric, that Barry not only got to write the score, but also the song for the third 007 film, Goldfinger, along with his old friends, Anthony Newley and Leslie Brickus, to write the words. Michael Caine, who was crashing at Barry's flat at the time, tells a funny story about being kept up all night while Barry was pounding out Goldfinger at the piano. <laughs> Believe it or not, the Goldfinger soundtrack went to number one in the United States, pushing both the Mary Poppins soundtrack and the Beatles 65 album out of the top spot for three consecutive weeks. That's how popular this music was, and it helped catapult John Barry into the limelight as well. Within two years, he would have his first two Academy Awards for Best Song and Best Score for Born Free, a movie about lions in Africa that couldn't be farther removed from the world of James Bond. But first, there was another Bond to score, and in some ways, this was the most complicated job of all. The next film was Thunderball, and once again, the composing assignment fell to John Barry. This time, he invited one of his Goldfinger colleagues, Leslie Brickus, to co-write a song that would be called Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, after a phrase he'd been told was a popular Italian nickname for Bond. <laughs> it went like this. He's tall, and he's dark, and like a shark, he looks for trouble. That's why the zeros double, Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Bond producers Cubby Broccoli and Harry Saltzman gave their okay. They wrote the song, Barry based his entire score on this theme, and they went into the studio with none other than Dionne Warwick to sing it. A very successful recording, and they all thought they had another Bond hit on their hands. Until United Artists decided it didn't want a song called Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang on the radio. They wanted a song called Thunderball. 